Okay, Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. In this video, we are going to look at chapter 3, Selection and Speciation. Okay, so in this video, we are going to focus on subtopic 3.2, Speciation. Okay, these are the learning outcomes for 3.2, Speciation. At the end of the lesson, students should be able to firstly, define biological species concept. Second, describe modes of speciation. Third, state the processes that leads to speciation. And lastly, relate the processes to speciation. Okay, so now let's look at the first learning outcome, which is define biological species concept. Okay, so how do we define the concept of species biologically? Okay, so according to biological species concept, species is defined as a group of populations whose members have potential to interbreed in nature and produce viable fertile offspring, but do not produce viable fertile offspring if interbreed with members of other populations. Okay, so let's look at the first example. So here we have Western Meadowlark and here we have Eastern Meadowlark. Okay, so both of them look alike in which they have uh, similar body shapes and colors and they live in overlapping regions. However, they have different courtship pattern in which they have different songs. Therefore, they do not breed with one another. Okay, so because of this different behavior, it prevent interbreed. Uh, sorry, it prevent these two species from interbreeding. Hence, we can say that uh, the Western meadowlark and Eastern meadowlark belong to different species because they cannot interbreed. So two populations are considered as distinct or different species if they do not interbreed in nature. Okay, so like uh, the eastern and western meadowlark, the previous example. And then the two populations are also considered as different species if they meet but produce sterile offspring. So an example of this is a horse and a donkey. So a horse and a donkey can meet producing a mule. However, this mule is sterile. Therefore, we can say that horse and donkey belong to different species. Okay, so now we're going to define speciation. So speciation is defined as an evolutionary process in which one species splits into two or more species. It is a process by which one or more species arise from previously existing species. Okay, now let's look at the second learning outcome. Describe modes of speciation, which are allopatric and sympatric. Okay, so there are two modes of speciation. Okay, so there are two modes of speciation, which are allopatric speciation and sympatric speciation. In allopatric speciation, formation of new species occurs when populations are geographically isolated. Okay, so like in this image here, we can see that uh, the blue fish is geographically isolated from the orange fish. And then in sympatric speciation, formation of new species occurs in a population that live in the same geographical area. Okay, so like in this image here, the blue fish uh, live in the same geographical area as the orange fish. Okay, allopatric speciation is the formation of new species that occurs in a population that is geographically isolated from one another. It involves geographical barriers such as mountains, hills, oceans, and rivers. Okay, so because uh, these populations are separated, because they are geographically isolated from one another, 
um, the gene flow between populations will be interrupted. Therefore, these organisms and their gametes cannot meet, which will lead to reproductive isolation, meaning interbreeding is prevented. And even when both of uh, these species are brought together again, they cannot interbreed. They are reproductively isolated. So sympatric speciation is the formation of new species that occurs in a population that live in the same geographical area from one another. Therefore, it does not involve geographical barriers. Okay, so in sympatric speciation, it involves biological barriers such as polyploidy and other reproductive isolating mechanism which will prevent interbreeding and gene flow between individuals. So the third learning outcome is state the processes that leads to speciation. Okay, so there are four processes that leads to speciation which are firstly reproductive isolation, second hybridization, third adaptive radiation and lastly genetic drift. So we're going to look at each of these processes in the next few slides. Okay, so the last learning outcome is relate these processes to speciation. So the processes are reproductive isolation, genetic drift, hybridization, and adaptive radiation. So the first process that we are going to look at is reproductive isolation. What is reproductive isolation? Reproductive isolation refers to the inability of a species to breed successfully with related species due to the existence of biological barriers. So reproductive isolation can occur before fertilization or prezygotic or after fertilization, postzygotic. There are two mechanisms of reproductive isolation. So prezygotic barrier or prezygotic isolation and postzygotic barrier or postzygotic isolation. Prezygotic barrier prevent mating between individuals. Or if mating occur, it will prevent fertilization between gametes, thus no gamete is formed. Okay, and for pozygotic barrier, it will prevent formation of viable fertile offspring if fertilization occur. Okay, so there are five types of prezygotic barriers or prezygotic isolation, which are temporal, habitat, behavioral, mechanical, and gametic isolation. And there are three types of pozygotic barriers, which are reduced hybrid viability, reduced hybrid fertility, and hybrid breakdown. Okay, so from this image here, we can see that um, there are um, gametes from two different species. Okay, so and then this um, prezygotic barriers okay, will prevent mating or if mating does occur, it will prevent fertilization between these gametes. Okay, therefore, no hybrid zygote is formed. Okay, and then let's say if a fertilization does occur and a hybrid zygote is formed, then there will be postzygotic barriers. So these postzygotic barriers will prevent the formation of a viable fertile offspring or viable fertile hybrid adult. Okay, so now let's look at prezygotic barriers first. Okay, so like I said earlier, prezygotic barriers prevent mating attempts between individuals. And let's say if mating does occur, it will then prevent fertilization between gametes. Okay, so let's look at this image here. Okay, so we have individuals of different species. Okay, and then there are these uh, three types of prezygotic isolation. Uh, habitat, temporal and behavioral isolation which will prevent meeting. 
Okay, so meeting is prevented. And then let's see if meeting does occur, mechanical isolation and gametic isolation will then prevent fertilization between gametes. Okay, so now we are going to look at each of these prezygotic barriers or prezygotic isolation in detail. Okay, so first let's look at habitat isolation. Okay, habitat isolation occurs when different species live in different habitats within the same geographical area. Okay, so for example, is two species of garter snakes. Okay, live in the same area, but one of them lives in water, okay, this one, and then the other one lives on land. Okay, therefore, this will prevent mating attempts between these two different species. Okay, so now let's look at temporal isolation, meaning different species reproduce at different times. So for example, is eastern and western spotted skunk. Eastern spotted skunk mate in late winter, while western spotted skunk mate in late summer. Therefore, temporal isolation will prevent mating between these two different skunk species. Okay, so the third one is behavioral isolation, meaning different animal species have different courtship patterns. Okay, an example of this is Western and Eastern Meadowlark. Okay, we have talked about this example before. Okay, Eastern and Western Meadowlark do not mate with each other because they use different songs to attract mates. Okay, because they have different courtship patterns. Okay, so what will happen if mating does occur? Okay, let's say if mating does occur, then fertilization of gametes will then be prevented okay, through mechanical isolation, meaning different species have different genital or floral structures. Okay, so for example, is the shells of two species of snails. Okay, so if you can see from this image here, the shells of two species of uh, these snails spiral in different directions. Okay, as a result, the snail's genital openings are not aligned. Therefore, mating cannot be completed and fertilization of gametes is prevented. Okay, and lastly is gametic isolation, meaning fertilization cannot occur between gametes from different species. Okay, so for example, is two different species of sea urchins. Okay, so we have red sea urchin here and purple sea urchin here. Okay, so the ovum of one species have different receptor proteins that cannot bind with sperm of another species. Okay, therefore, fertilization between gametes will be prevented. Okay, so now let's look at postzygotic barriers. So postzygotic barriers occur after fertilization. Okay, so it's different than prezygotic barriers because prezygotic barriers occur before fertilization. Okay, so postzygotic barriers. Okay, um, let's say if fertilization does occur, it will then prevent development of viable offspring, or after the hybrid is born, okay, after the offspring is born, it will then prevent fertility of the hybrid. Okay, so there are three types of pozygotic barriers, which are reduced hybrid viability or hybrid inviability, reduced hybrid fertility or hybrid sterility, and lastly is hybrid breakdown. Okay, so all of these pozygotic barriers is to prevent the formation of viable and fertile offspring. Okay, so we are going to look at each of these uh, postzygotic barriers in detail. The first one is hybrid inviability or reduced hybrid viability, meaning hybrid is not viable, it is not fully developed, or hybrid died, it do not survive long enough to reproduce. So example of this is um, salamander. Okay, so most of the hybrids of some salamander species do not complete development. 
and those that do complete development are frail. Okay, so like uh, this image here. The second one is hybrid sterility or reduced hybrid fertility. Okay, so meaning hybrid develop into sterile adult. Okay, so example of this is mule. Okay, so we talked about this example before. Okay, mule, okay, this one is sterile hybrid formed through mating between donkey and horse. Okay, and lastly is hybrid breakdown. Okay, hybrid breakdown, okay, it will produce viable and fertile hybrid in F1 generation. However, the next generation is sterile. Okay, so example is rice hybrids. Okay, so rice hybrids on the left and right are fertile. Okay, however, their next generation, which is in the middle here, are sterile. Now we are going to look at the second process that leads to speciation, which is genetic drift. Okay, what is genetic drift? Okay, genetic drift is a change in allele and genotype frequencies due to chance rather than by natural selection. Okay, so for example, um, as you can see in this image here, okay, so we have um, three green beetles and six um, white beetles. Okay, and then let's say uh, someone step on two of the green beetles. Okay, and now there's only one green beetle. Okay, so from this image, okay, there is a change in allele and genotype frequencies of these beetles, but it occurs due to chance rather than by natural selection. So there are two types of genetic drift, which are founder effect and bottleneck effect. Okay, so first let's look at uh, founder effect. Founder effect occurs when a new colony is started by a few individuals of the original population. Okay, so um, as you can see from this image here, okay, so we have uh, this population of uh, ladybirds, okay, yellow and red ladybirds. Okay, and then let's say um, this red ladybird co uh, colonized this island. Okay, so uh, so this shows founder effect. Okay, so a new colony is started by a few individuals of the original population. Okay, small population size of the new colony have less genetic variation compared to the original population. Okay, so what is an example of founder effect? Okay, so in 1700s, a small group of Europeans migrated to eastern Pennsylvania. Okay, in the small group, there is individuals who carry allele for Ellis van Creveld syndrome. Okay, so the allele for this syndrome is found at frequency of 7% in the Pennsylvania population compared to only 0.1% in original European population. Okay, so now we are going to look at a bottleneck effect. Okay, bottleneck effect occurs when there is sudden drastic decrease in population due to adverse environmental factors such as natural disaster. Okay, so let's look at this image here. Okay, so we can see this is the original population is in this bottle here. Okay, so we have uh, blue beads, white beads, and yellow beads. Okay, so you imagine these are um, the original population, the total number of um, original population. Okay, and then let's say there is a bottlenecking event. There is a natural disaster. Okay, so only these beads are the surviving population. The blue beads and one uh, white bead. Okay, so um, everyone in this bottle died. Okay, so this is um, the bottleneck effect, okay, because there is a sudden drastic decrease in population, okay, due to um, adverse envir environmental factors. Okay, the small number of individuals in surviving population have less genetic variation compared to the original population. So if you can see from this image here, this is the original population and this is the final population. Okay. And then let's say there's a bottleneck event. Okay, so these are the surviving population and this is the final population. Okay, so if we compare the original and the final population, we can see that the original population have large genetic diversity 
compared to the final population. Okay, now we are going to look at uh, the third process that leads to speciation, which is hybridization. Okay, so for hybridization, we are going to focus on allopolyploidy. Allopolyploidy occurs when different species interbreed, producing sterile hybrid. Okay, so for example, from this image here, we can see that there is emmer wheat here, and here is the wild wheat. Okay, so these two different species interbreed, producing sterile hybrid. Okay, um, this hybrid is sterile because their chromosomes are not homologous. Okay, therefore, they cannot undergo synapsis. They cannot pair up during meiosis. Thus, no gametes are formed. Okay, however, this sterile hybrid can still propagate asexually in plants. Okay, and after chromosome doubling, okay, this sterile hybrid will then change to fertile polyploid. Okay, so the fourth process that leads to speciation is adaptive radiation. Okay, adaptive radiation is the evolution of diverse species from a common ancestor due to adaptation to various new environmental conditions. Okay, so an example of adaptive radiation is finches of Galapagos Island. There are many species of closely related finches, as you can see from this image here. Okay, and we can also see that uh, these finches have different big shapes and sizes, right? Okay, so this is because um, their big shapes and sizes are adapted to specific food or diet that is available in their habitat on the island. Okay, so for these finches here, okay, they are big um, or adapted okay, uh, for sipping nectar. Okay, and then this one, okay, um, these finches, uh, their beaks are adapted for probing insects and this one is for crushing seeds. Okay, so that is an example of adaptive radiation. Okay, so before I end this video, I would like to share three questions with you. Okay, so this is question number one. And this is question number two. And lastly, question number three. Okay, that's all. Thank you for watching.